it going? We're going. All right. So, hi everyone. Welcome back. Um, let's see. It's a little shaky there. I have you guys on a. I don't know why it's blurry. Hold on. Oops. Have you guys on on a calculator on a couple of books? So, anyways, um, welcome back to this segment on my podcast uh, let's see I have my laptop here to reference some some uh, sources and then I have my notes so bear with me if I keep looking down not necessarily looking at the camera but okay so welcome back to double M uh, really quick what it stands for again is more multiculturalism so which is what we're talking about today. So let's just jump right into it. Multiculturalism. Uh, I'll be going over a few topics, um, specifically some questions that I'll be answering, um, and I'll just read them off right now. So the first one is, why is multiculturalism needed? Uh, and what has hindered the progress in diversity efforts and why? Um, what is systematic racism and what is it? What is its role in the hindrance of diversity? And then the last one, it's to analyze the histo- Sorry, I heard a noise. Uh, historical relationship between law enforcement and minority populations, and specifically what needs to change. So, to jump right into it, um, what is multiculturalism? So. Multiculturalism is basically a society where more, uh, many different cultures live. So you get people from different backgrounds, different societies, and you bring them all together. That's essentially multiculturalism. It says it in the name. Uh, this this can be uh, different countries, different regions. They come and migrate. An example would be in a classroom, say, with, a for, uh, with foreign exchange students, say, from Europe or Asia you know, and that would be an example of uh, multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is uh, similar to diversity, but d- I, I per se, d- diversity focuses more about the differences between individuals, per se, and multiculturalism kind of more general population-wise. So... Diversity focuses on things such as race and gender, um, etc. So that's that's what multiculturalism is. And then to answer number two, okay, what was what has hindered uh, progress in diversity efforts and why? So this one's a little more, you know, you had to kind of go more in depth on it. So. Personally, I believe that people's beliefs on uh, diversity, actually, and how people how people see diversity specifically, is what hinders the people's beliefs on diversity is what hinders diversity is what I'm trying to say. Um, so the efforts are being hindered because we're being told to see ourselves as oppressed. And there's this big stigma on, yes, like, good diversity is what leads this country, and th- that that is our core focus, and you always hear melting pot and all of that stuff, and I necessarily have to disagree that it's neither good or bad. Diversity is neither good or bad, it just, it just is what it is, and it comes naturally, it just... Everyone has different cultures, different backgrounds, and comes naturally. So it shouldn't necessarily be a goal to be diverse, because that takes away kind of what diversity actually is. So um, I was, here's a, um, not necessarily, here's a quote from a video I was watching earlier. I'd link it down in the description. So uh, it, it mentions, they define it by trivialities of gonads and melanin and now all of the various gender identities that are being rapidly crafted so we have this sort of 
this vision of what diversity is. And so as a society, uh, we fail to make progress in diversity just by simply overcomplicating it and making it too complex. Uh, so essentially the recap here would be being told that we're oppressed makes diversity hindered, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's see. number the next question let's move on there's a lot a lot of information and my notes are kind of everywhere all right um what is systematic racism and what is its role in hindering diversity oh wait hold on i think i got the questions mixed up no did i what is hindered progress in diversity? No. Okay. Sorry. Brain fart. All right. So uh, let's move on. Let's go over what is systematic racism. So systematic racism is essentially just institutional racism. Um, some examples would be like wealth, income, employment, the police department, healthcare, education, etc. Just all of those things that you know, you don't necessarily see, um, but is, is there uh, per se. So what is its role and, um, let's, let's just go over what its role is, I guess. So its role is just to like, I don't know exactly how to explain it. Its role, um, personally, I don't believe it It hinders diversity and to the extent that many people claim it does. Um, I, I was watching a video a while ago and I was trying to look it up and um, it basically uh, describes how systematic racism on diversity is actually minimal. So um, I'll just go over what the the video was explaining. So say that you take two populations where you claim that the systematic racism exists. Uh, specifically, you get second generation West Indians and black Americans, and then um, you get their children of each uh, where you can't tell them apart just by looking at them. And they differ culturally in many ways, whether it be food, the way they dress, the way they speak, everything they they just differ culturally and they both undergo um systematic uh racism at whatever whatever extent or whatever degree that people believe that they're undergoing so um let's just say let's say in the education system so the video was mentioning that in these two populations Actually, they have equal, equal systematic racism and the rate of high school graduation actually is higher in the West Indians, which again is said to be like the minorities groups, right? And then also the college enrollment is higher and then the crime is lower. So if we go back to what systematic racism is, it's institutional racism with the employment, healthcare, education, wealth, etc. But when you look back at it, you you can't see you can see uh that systematic racism plays a very little role in the hindrance of diversity. And um so I guess the narrative that society has built for um, it being the obstacle, the main and primary obstacle in minorities uh, being systematic racism is is and, and, and seems to be invalid. So it, it, it just proves that systematic racism not necessarily exists, but to the to the extent where it isn't a primary reason for the, I guess, 
like not oppression, but the reason um, that you see less success in minorities or whatnot and what society claims to say. Kind of fell. Okay. So, uh, what I had just mentioned uh, earlier or just now, uh, I just pulled the video up. And it's actually a video taken uh, from Coleman Hughes um, on the, his interview on the Rubin Report. So, uh, I can link that down in the, I guess, the description below if you wanted to check that out. He has a few really solid points that have to have to do with systematic racism. Um, let's see. <clears throat> okay. All right, I think we're ready to move on to the fourth point. Okay, so... And then the fourth question is... Um, or not question, but it says to analyze the historical relationship between law enforcement and minority populations. Okay. And what needs to change specifically? All right. Um, let's go over. Where do we start? <clears throat> All right. So in society, you know, there's people that believe that social factors have, uh, have something to do with the prejudice of police against minorities, which okay, uh, let's let's try to back this up with some statistics now. Um, oh, okay. Kind of have to <laughs> readjust or not readjust. Collect my uh, ideas really quick. I'm trying to jump. So. Uh, I just went over the societal, uh, social factors have to do with the prejudice of police against minorities. Um, I believe this has to do with culture, not necessarily race. So the culture of minorities, typically in minorities, it has to do with parenting, uh, not necessarily the the race it just so happens to be that the minorities are the ones with the higher crime rates and so some statistics to back this up um let's see okay um so in this example i'll be looking at um, african americans and i'll be reading this Right now it says blacks have a much higher chance of killing each other more black on black crimes than they do being killed by a white cop. And specifically from the Daily Wire, it says here blacks are 10% of the population in L.A., California, but they commit 42% of the robberies and 34% of the felonies. Whites make up 29% of the city's population, but only commit 5% of its robberies and 13% of its felonies. Now, that's a statistic. Uh, that's a statistic for you right there. Uh, but the numbers are significantly lower compared to uh, the blacks and the whites. So, I mean, it says it right. Fuck. Yeah, so going back to it being about culture and not necessarily about race, um, in this article, which I'll also link down below, um, it mentions that we clearly see the thug life style uh, become famous in the black and rap culture, and it's not necessarily a racist statement. It's more because there there's literal songs that that are titled F the police. So, um, and then there's, uh, gang violence, not to mention. So it's just all of these examples that create this, uh, scenario of police 
and the, the law enforcement and minorities to have the police be sort of like the bad guys, which is not necessarily true. And I have another uh, statistic here that says most stop and frisk individuals tend to be minorities, but that's because the crime is primarily committed in a minority neighborhood, in minority neighborhoods. So, of course, if you're creating more crimes, you're going to be stopped and frisked, and it just so happens to be minorities that do that. <clears throat> Let's go back. So, the question here asks, what, what, um, what needs to change? So, in my personal opinion, I think a lot of things need to change, but specifically the most important would be parenting. Uh, parenting, because in minorities, typically you see only one parent raising the child and the other parent being absent. And then I have here a statistic, I believe is from uh, 2016, but it states 74.3% um, of all white children below the age of 18 live with both parents and only 38% of African-American minors can say the same. So that's basically saying that well over, well under half of African American minors do not live with both parents. So this just seems to go to back to like the thug life stuff, you know. And I also have here uh, the effect of, uh, or how the absence of a parent affects a child. And here it mentions that they have, uh, they're unable to form healthy relationships and they have more stress um, and they suffer, you know, they, it just has a bunch of different um, effects that the child goes through. And you see this all the time in minorities that they're not necessarily, uh, they're not implemented the exact same uh, way that uh, non-minority groups are, and this obviously isn't doesn't go for every single household or every single uh, every single group of uh, people, but when the numbers are speaking, I'm here reading the numbers. Uh, computers freezing but that's that's great <laughs> uh, let's see what did I just last say okay it's a little okay all right I got it so, um, going back to the uh, other statistic I was going to read, it says that more than a third of all black children in the United States under the age of 18 live with unmarried mothers, compared to 6.5% of white children. So, again, the numbers are significantly different for the most part. Um, the second thing I think that needs to be done is, yeah, the the police system i think they need to be better trained there needs to be better training uh, there needs to be better training in you know uh say that how how do i want to put this they need to undergo better training because they need to be able to de-escalate situations they need to be able to work well with others of course not necessarily use forceful acts uh, i do agree with that there needs to be much better training for mental health uh, there needs to be more awareness on this but for the most part i believe it starts at home it starts at home with the parenting and the entire home environment and then the police system uh, 
getting better. I'd like to see more uh, more money go be pumped into that to 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 prevent deaths that we hear on the news, um, police brutality, and and all. And that's that's a whole other topic that I won't go into. Very interesting, but that's a whole other topic. So I think that that's basically it. Is that the four questions? Yeah, that's the four questions. So that's basically all. Um, I, I guess I'll see you guys the next video. All right.